Hello everyone and a very warm welcome. In this video, we introduce you to the ICE attributes and provide a few examples of evidence. If you are currently compiling your professional reports, I strongly recommend that you watch this video from beginning right through to the end because it explains what is expected. Please do make sure you subscribe to the channel and like the video because that tells us that you value the content, you find it useful, and it also motivates us to create more videos for you. Finally, by subscribing, you will not miss out on any of the videos that we will be uploading. I would also appreciate your support if you gave the video a like. Understanding and practical application of engineering. You are expected to have maintained and extended your knowledge of engineering theory and practice and how technology assists its application. You are expected to have also solved engineering problems using a sound theoretical approach based on evidence and contributes to continuous improvements. You must also identify, review, and select techniques, procedures, and methods to undertake engineering tasks. In addition, you must lead the design and development of engineering solutions, implement those solutions, and evaluate their effectiveness. You must demonstrate sound, independent engineering judgment. Now, this is a very, very important point. Your report must clearly show independent engineering judgment. You must also highlight an example of independent engineering judgment during the interview. You must play a direct role in determining the solution and the methodologies used to solve engineering problems, their implementation, and be able to evaluate if they function. You must demonstrate that you have engineering technical knowledge and understanding, that you know the theory and first principles, and you know best practice and standards and codes, and are able to make technical decisions and solve technical problems. Now, in your discipline, you must be able to use relevant technology and apply the right methods to solve engineering problems and you must contribute to the improvement of methods and solutions. Now there's so many questions you can ask yourself. Um, these questions will actually help you when you compile your reports. So for instance, what is your engineering technical knowledge and how have you employed it to solve engineering problems or projects that you work on? What did you study at school? What are you currently doing? And how did you improve your knowledge from what you have in the university to what you are currently um, working with? How do you plan to show that, um, you know, you've gained the necessary experience to help you complete engineering projects? Now, before solving an engineering problem, did you consider um, different options? Did you identify the alternatives that you had? Did you appraise those alternatives? Um, did you recommend solutions or preferred options? So what exactly did you do? How did you do it? Um, did you perform tests? Did you perform feasibility and viability study? Um, have you constructed solutions or designs? Or did you have other people design them for you? Have you modeled? Um, as part of problem solving? And did you carry out simulations? Um, have you carried out analysis of engineering problems? Um, have you modified or adapted your solutions or have you suggested system modifications? Or did you have other people modify the systems based on your recommendations? These are some of the questions you should ask yourself as you um, produce your engineering reports. So have a think, as a civil engineer, you have to answer that question. Which specialized areas of civil engineering do you currently 
um, work in. So is it structural engineering? Is it environmental engineering? Is it geotechnical engineering? Is it transportation engineering? Is it water resource engineering? Surveying, construction engineering, municipal engineering? So think about the ideas, the rules or the theories that can help you solve the engineering problems that you are confronted with. So can you explain the methods used to analyze models? Are you able to explain um, your knowledge and understanding of relevant engineering standards and codes? So can you describe in a logical manner how you comply with current best practices in the industry? Uh, can you describe the fundamental theories in your discipline? Are you competent in your discipline? And have you performed calculations or have you had other people perform the calculations based on your recommendation? Can you explain how you arrived at um, the different materials that you have used for construction, which was more economical? Um, do you fully understand the properties of the materials that you have used? Which ones were sustainable? How did you arrive at making those choices? How did you improve your knowledge and your competence to the level where you were comfortable enough to make an independent decision? Also, you should think about the engineering principles, the codes, the standards. Um, think about the recent standards that you have used and be prepared to quote them. We will consider a couple of examples. Now, the first one is more generic. It's not necessarily civil engineering based, but it will give you an idea of how to logically present your arguments. Okay, so understanding and practical application of engineering. Now, the candidate writes, whilst working as the lead design engineer at supersonic power plant, I developed a new data logging system for the turbine control system. Now, this was necessary because the existing data logging system of the turbine control system was obsolete and unsustainable. In addition, the data printing system was slow and there was frequent occurrence of paper jams leading to significant downtime. I designed and implemented the new system using MATLAB and incorporated a functionality to log the turbine data onto log files in dedicated computers, allowing users to format the data before sending it for printing. I also provided specification for a replacement printing system. The new system has eliminated downtime related to maintenance of the previous system. In this example, the candidate has told us what the new system does and the benefits it provides. The candidate also told us why exactly it was necessary for a replacement system to be um, installed. We'll consider a second example. So understanding and practical application of engineering. Whilst working as a design engineer for emphasis engineering, I received a proposal for a new building method. There was resistance from the project stakeholders as they considered the new method risky as it was an off-site solution that employed precast concrete. Our common practice was to use an in-situ method. I carried out a feasibility and viability study and researched the benefits of using an off-site solution. I considered the design for manufacturing assembly, the FMA approach. My findings showed that structures designed off-site using a DFMA approach can help reduce construction program time and save costs. 
the project stakeholders are all on board with the DFMA and my company is now pushing for an adoption of the DFMA in more projects. So in this example, the candidate was presented with an engineering task. He undertook appropriate investigation by carrying out a research. And he also conducted a feasibility and viability study. As part of continuous improvement, his company has adopted a new method, which is clearly more efficient. Management and leadership. You must provide evidence of planning and sequencing work and allocating resources required for effective project implementation. You must manage the planning and organization of tasks and resources, manage teams, and demonstrate technical leadership. Are you able to work independently without asking for help? Can you lead meetings and explain technical objects confidently and logically? You must also assist colleagues to meet changing technical and managerial needs and manage quality processes and contribute to quality improvements. Do you create project plans, project startup documents, work breakdown schedules, program Gantt charts? Do you set milestones and keep to project deadlines? How do you report progress? How do you deal with change? Are you responsible for your CPD? And do you support the development of less experienced engineers? You need to be developing staff, leading change, controlling change, and learning from the past. What happens if there is a gap in your knowledge or the knowledge of a team member? You must ensure that they are trained or that you can fill the gap with other team members or if possible, request for external resource. Do you influence team training and development? What exactly do you do to ensure the effective management of people and resource in your department? What have you done with regards to quality assurance and quality assurance plans? Do you support audits? Are you involved with quality management processes? Is your company ISO 9001 accredited? So we will consider a couple of examples. Management and leadership. I produced a quality plan specifying the civil works to be carried out, the order in which they were to be carried out, responsibilities and the quality assurance grade for each item of work. This followed a pre-job brief with project stakeholders. The quality plan I produced also specified the documented procedures to be used for each item of work. In addition, I checked that each item of work was carried out by competent staff. Also, I maintained a risk log detailing all threats to successful implementation of the project. During each weekly project update meeting, I led discussions on measures necessary to address risks to the project. We consider another example, management and leadership. As project engineer on the £20 million bridge construction project, I carry out a regular review of the contractor monthly status report in order to monitor project performance. I am also responsible for managing stakeholders working on the project. In addition, I carry out regular program reviews with senior project stakeholders. This is to ensure 
that the project is executed as planned. It also ensures that we agree key deliverables milestones. Commercial ability. You must manage, prepare, and control costs or budgets of engineering tasks or projects and use sound knowledge of statutory and commercial frameworks within your own area of responsibility. You are also expected to know about other commercial arrangements. What is the value of the project you are currently working on? Do you manage a budget? How is it calculated? How much have your engineering or financial decisions saved your company? What forms of contract do you work with? Do you know how other types of contracts operate? What is NEC? So, New Engineering Contract, NEC, is a family of contracts that help apply good project management principles and practices and define legal relationships. Now, NEC's vision is to become the global leader in promoting best practice procurement of works, services, and supply. What happens when there is scope creep that impacts budget? What happens if you are behind schedule? How do you manage financial risks? How are financial risks communicated to stakeholders within your company? What is your interface with the supply chain? Do you understand the procurement process within your company? Where does the money come from? Who funds your projects? And how do you get the best value for your project? How many training contracts or training courses have you attended? It is a very good idea to attend at least one training course which is related to budget, um, cost planning, cost management um, every year. So one similar training every year is recommended for you as a civil engineer. We will consider an example. Commercial ability. I analyzed contract variations and negotiated additional funding for the project. In addition, I carried out review of contractor monthly status report to monitor project performance and ensured that work was within budget. I agreed the specification for the purchase of equipment and provided relevant specification information to project stakeholders. This ensured that only equipment that had fully undergone necessary qualification and met design specification were procured. Health, safety, and welfare. Here, you are expected to demonstrate a sound knowledge of legislation, hazards, and safe systems of work. You are also expected to manage risks, health, and safety, and welfare in your own area of responsibility. What are the relevant pieces of legislation? Can you name them and describe them? Legislation varies from industry to industry, from one country to another country, and as a chartered engineer, you have to provide examples of where you promoted safety at work. You have to provide examples of where you incorporated safety in the design of different systems, in the design of buildings. You must provide examples of where you reduced um, the exposure of hazards um, within your company. And what exactly did you do to ensure that people were exposed to um, less hazards. You have to understand the different levels of risk. What have you done to eliminate risk? 
and if there were any residual risks um, are those levels of risks tolerable okay have you carried out risk assessment what was the benefit of the risk assessment so as part of your work have you been in a position where you've had to challenge unsafe practices what exactly did you do did you challenge people okay how did you influence people's behavior how did you change their attitudes towards safety okay how about your welfare and that of your colleagues are you responsible for the people um, that work with you for their welfare what exactly do you do to ensure that um, their welfare is well taken care of how often do you attend health and safety training do you go for regular medical um, checkups to make sure that you are in good um, condition do you know about CDM regulations do you visit site regularly do you have a construction skills certification scheme card so that's the CSCS card health safety and welfare I am bound by all codes of professional conduct regarding duty of care I have a duty of care for myself and I owe others a duty of care while carrying out my job as an example I guided contractors during site survey visits to power stations preparatory to commencing system design I was the responsible site escort for the contractors during the site visits since the plant was located in a radiological controlled area I ensured that the contractors received RCA training and had correct protective clothing I ensured that the contractors were escorted at all times while on site sustainable development you must be aware of and understand the United Nations sustainable development goals the UN SDGs relating to your own professional activities and decisions and consider them and your impact on them during project life cycles the UN sustainable development goals are a call to action to end poverty protect the planet and improve the lives and prospects of everyone everywhere the goals were adopted in 2015 as part of the UN's 2030 agenda for sustainable development which set out a 15-year plan to achieve the goals progress is being made in many areas but more action is required chartered engineers are expected to fully understand the UN SDGs and also um, look out for the SDGs that are most relevant to their work okay it is important to point out that sustainability is not limited to the environment so financial sustainability is very important as a civil engineer you're expected to be reasonable and save the company money wherever possible we'll consider one example sustainable development I was project engineer responsible for the design and construction of a multi-story car park whilst reviewing the tender documentation requirements I discovered an opportunity to implement a sustainable solution that was aimed at reducing quantity of steel within the frame I proposed using a semi-rigid frame design this method had never been implemented at work and so I had to carry out an extensive research on semi 
uh, rigid frame design and shared my findings with project stakeholders in the form of a technical report. The project stakeholders agreed with my proposal and I implemented a semi-rigid design in the car park construction project. This had the benefits of reducing the quantity of steel and also reduced the transportation and haulage costs. Interpersonal skills and communication. You must communicate well with others at all levels, including effective use of English orally and in writing. You must discuss ideas and plans competently and with confidence and demonstrate effective personal and social skills. So just to let you know that during your interviews, you will be assessed in the area of confidence so that's a very, very important factor. So everyone who does business with you needs to know that they are entrusting their business um, to someone who appears confident and sure of himself or herself. Okay. Um, in addition, you must demonstrate awareness of diversity and inclusion. So this is, of course, very, very important. Okay. Um, in terms of producing reports, um, what is the quality of your report? Can you produce reports which is easy to digest? Okay. Um, is it, um, are your reports easy to understand by different people? So people of diverse um, technical backgrounds. So how efficient is your communication? Okay, is there a way that you can measure its effectiveness? Okay. How do you communicate and interact with your colleagues? Do you lead business meetings? Do you take minutes? How efficient are your emails? How are your telephone skills? When communicating with team members, do you show respect? Are you a good listener? Okay. Are you emotionally intelligent? Do you show empathy? And do you adapt your behavior when you're talking with a wide um, range of people? So people of different um, backgrounds and people of different levels within your your business how do you deal with challenging situations how do you resolve conflicts or disputes within your team so what is the relevant legislation and your employers policies with respect to um, diversity and inclusion So we will consider an example, interpersonal skills and communication. I chaired the weekly construction project meeting aimed at ensuring that project stakeholders work together to meet the design, operational and safety case requirements of the system. I captured all key decisions and actions of each meeting and ensured that the stakeholders completed all actions placed on them. In addition, I represented the civil department during higher level monthly project meetings with program manager and other top management stakeholders. So just to um, remind you that you will be tested on your communication skills during your presentation, um, the interview, and also the communication task. The quality of your written application would also be assessed. Professional commitment. You must understand and comply with the ICE code of conduct. So it's important for you to understand ethical issues that may arise in your role and carry out your responsibilities in an ethical manner. So with regards to CPD, you are ultimately responsible for your development. So ensure that you plan it 
um, abide by it, maintain it, and also aim to improve your competence yearly. Okay. It's also important for you to um, know the limits of your personal knowledge. So know the work that you can take on and know how to delegate where necessary. Okay. This is very important. Do not perform tasks that you are not competent to perform. So regarding the ICE code of conduct, um, have you read the ICE code of conduct? Um, can you provide examples from your professional experience to show how you comply with it? Okay. Um, what does your employer say about ethical behavior okay uh, what exactly does it mean to behave ethically can you provide several examples okay this is very important um as part of your work right what do you do when you are pressurized to do something which isn't right do you give in to pressure or do you resist that Why exactly do you want to become um, chartered with the ICE? How well do you know about the ICE? Do you know who the current um, president of the ICE is? Do you know who the past president is? Okay. What are the structures within the ICE? How is it governed? So like I said earlier on, um, if you were asked to do something that uh, you didn't feel you were competent to do, how would you react? Have you been faced with a situation like this? What exactly did you do? How did you escalate um, this issue? Okay. Um, something which is very important would be your involvement in ICE activities. So how many events have you attended? Um, you've got so many online workshops that you can attend. So how many have you attended? Um, how many presentations have you um, attended? Are you a volunteer? Have you volunteered? How often do you volunteer? We will consider an example. Professional commitment. I apply ethical principles while carrying out my job. I apply the ethical principle of confidentiality by respecting all non-disclosure agreements between Emphasis Engineering and other original equipment manufacturers. For example, while working with equipment qualification documents from confidential industries, I ensured that the documents uh, were safe and locked away from third parties who do not have rights to access them. This was to ensure adherence to the non-disclosure agreement between Emphasis Engineering and Confidential Industries. I delivered a workshop to the Emphasis Engineering Mentors Group, which is made up of Chartered Engineers, on how to apply for Chartered Engineer status with the ICE. The workshop was aimed at giving mentors an insight on how to monitor their mentees progress towards obtaining chartered engineer status with the ICE. So thank you very much for watching. Do not hesitate to contact us if you require support. And finally, do not forget to subscribe to this channel. I would appreciate it if you liked the video. This always motivates us to create more videos. So thank you very much. Have an amazing day. And I wish you the very best in your pursuit of becoming a chartered engineer and also in your professional life. Thank you.